the Backcountry Bogey AOA capabilities today. Hey, it's Steve, welcome back to Clear Direct. We're test flying this RANS S21 in the new task-based flight test program. How does, does the system work? There's no AOA vein, right? So the GAP26 connected to the Garmin G3X Touch system takes one pneumatic port, your dynamic port right there. I do have a static port back there. And then there's a third tube, right? It takes some ports up down here and it sends that data to the electronics and it does a bunch of calculations and computations and figures things out based upon the calibration we're about to do today. And it gives you your angle of attack. I just am used to flying angle of attack in all the other airplanes I fly. So I'm excited to have that, especially into the backcountry. The one piece of information that I needed that I didn't have until last flight was my stall speed. I did a bunch of stalls and I got that to be 43 knots. It's pretty impressive. Almost regardless of what flap setting, it shows 43 knots for VSO, velocity, stall speed, dirty, right? We're gonna fly four different calibration maneuvers today. Okay, the first one, 43 is important, right? That's your stall, stall speed. The second speed to note is stall speed times 1.5. That's the, the point at which your AOA display comes on on your PFD. The next one is the normal approach speed, 1.3 of when you're gonna start getting those beeps. And then 1.1 is gonna be essentially your stall, stall warning. And then you're gonna go through an actual stall to validate what that angle of attack is, because it doesn't care if it's 43 knots, you could have an accelerated stall. So what you're trying to do is get the angles of attack and not just set air speeds in there. So the, the coolest maneuver is you actually do a power off stall and the system is analyzing and figuring out what the highest angle of attack you got to in that stall before it breaks, you recover, you hit done. So we're gonna go through all that stuff and finally get AOA on the backcountry bogey. The first thing we need to do is get into the back end and actually tell the aircraft now that I do have AOA. So let's do that first and then we'll get airborne, let's go. Quickly on the back end, we're in configuration mode. The first thing you wanna check is your LRU page to make sure that in your Adahar section, your AOA is enabled. Once that's enabled, go to the AOA page and ensure that everything is showing there and you can set up thresholds for when you want it to turn on and turn off, essentially. I've got that set to 40 and 30. We'll see if that's adequate. And then the last place that you want to check is sound. So these are the alert beeps. So go down to AOA alert. Make sure that this is enabled. You can set up the volume and test it. And then also AOA alert mo mode. I'm gonna start off with pretty much, you know, everything enabled that we can. And then I'll probably end up turning off the approach awareness. So once you're all set up, time to go fly. So I've been getting some Atahars miscompares. That is saying that the main Atahars disagrees with the backup G5 Atahars. So I'm doing another calibration. So you wanna get the wings level and the aircraft in flight attitude to recalibrate that. And I realized that I never calibrated the Garmin G5. And I love simple solutions like that in that it's not a hardware error, it's a user error. So that's the place where I start. So check out this aircraft in flight attitude. Tail is really, really high. Um, and then, you know, there's just a slight angle of attack on the aircraft or on the wing. And it looks like the aircraft is, is nose down. What I was doing was I was testing calibrating it based upon this bar right here it has to be 90 degrees pretty darn close as close as i'm gonna get it looks like those are done calibrating so hopefully we won't get any more missed compares so that's done the other thing uh, i did out on this one but i didn't do on this one is an engine run-up test it just kind of senses the vibration hopefully that'll get things running a little more smooth about what the first thing we're gonna do is. I've already established what stall speed is, but I don't think I did a good job in documenting it. So we're gonna do that again, just so that we can establish what our speeds are that we wanna kinda shoot for in this AOA calibration. What I'm doing right now is I'm kinda cooling off the cylinder head temperatures rather than shock cooling them and just pulling the throttle back. I'm just slowly bringing it back as we've level off, kinda maintaining some airspeed here. As I'm gaining some SA on where I am, in relation to the airfield and where other traffic is. 
So I've got the TCAS kind of pulled up here. Terrain is not a factor. I'm well within gliding distance of Bend Municipal at a nine to one glide ratio. So uh, in an area that is not very well uh, trafficked. So a couple clearing turns as we're waiting to start our stall test. Guys, just so you know, this isn't the first time um, I was. I did this yesterday and I cleared the values so I can uh, record it for you guys today. So I wouldn't recommend doing this holding a camera. Okay, so good clearing turn. CHTs are coming down nicely, upper 300s. I'm gonna keep them coming down a little bit more. We'll set this up just going into the wind. You don't need to, but I think it'll be kind of cool to see what our ground speed is when we've got a 13 knot headwind. So we'll just point straight into the headwind and get set up for some stalls. So CHTs are, are down where I'm comfortable. Looking for 7,500 feet. Slowly coming back on the throttle some more. And spoiler alert, I know the stall's gonna break about 43 knots. Again, we're doing everything in knots. This is an IFR bird, so I could do everything in miles an hour. Most of my buddies do in the backcountry, but uh, it's okay, I can, uh, I can manage. So we're gonna try to fly as best as we can, coordinated flight, keeping that ball centered. Trimming it up for, you know, about 10 to 20 knots above stall speed. You don't want to, you don't want to trim for stall speed because you want that aircraft to break hands off and, and go nose down. Okay, so here we are. We're going to establish stall speed by uh, power off stall. Everything we're doing is flaps in, power off stall today. So I'm slowly coming in with full flaps. Okay. Nice and steady, 7,500 feet, and got power on, so I'm approaching it from a power on situation. So I'm gonna go ahead and re-accelerate. Just cause you don't wanna be chopping that throttle right before stall, because you could, and also you don't wanna pulse the stick, cause that is uh, territory for getting into kind of a dynamic overshoot, which we can talk about more in the debrief. So everything needs to be smooth, and steady. Okay, so it's 60 knots. I'm gonna go ahead and go to idle power from here and just not touch the throttle until the stall breaks. We're gonna set up for 7,500 feet. Here we go, level flight, level flight, level flight, full flaps, full flaps. Keep bringing the stall, the stick back until the break. There it is, full, so 44, 43 knots. Okay, add a little bit of power gently, don't, Recover too quickly because you could get into an accelerated stall. I'm not going to insult your intelligence. I'm going to assume you know how to do some stalls. Okay, climbing back up. So we've kind of verified that it's about 43, 44 knots. All right, so we want to get into the right menu. Double clutch the menu button. And it's in setup. Angle of attack. Here we go. So... I'm going to start with the minimum visible AOA calibration. You can start with any of them. You'll notice you got to have all three of these three done before um, you set the approach target AOA calibration. Okay, I'm climbing. I'm going to descend back down to 7,500 feet and do another clearing turn. And the first one we're going to do is the minimum visible AOA calibration. All right, based upon my stall speed being about 43 uh, knots, I want to start seeing that AOA at about 65 knots. And again, we're talking knots, but you know we're really calibrating the AOA because we don't have that yet. So the baseline is full flaps, a non-accelerated stall, so nice and gentle. So okay, clearing turn, we're pointed back towards the airport for safety, and we're gonna get in this, and we're gonna start setting up for level flight at 65 knots, full flaps. So we're going to hit that button. There we go. Now when I'm ready, when I'm all stabilized, which looks pretty good right now, I'm going to hit start. Boom, it was successful. There's your coefficient value. It doesn't mean anything to you. But it should make sense. So that should be kind of your, well, stall warning should be your max. Uh, AOA, that should kind of be your minimum, right? Because that's going to trigger it to come up on the screen. This is your stall warning. So that should be about 1.1 times your VSO. And this was 1.5 times my VSO. 
and then this will be 1.3 times my VSO. That's just a stall. All right, so let's get set up for the caution AOA. So that's gonna be essentially the stall warning. I'm gonna go 1.1 times my VSO. So that's 47 knots, full flaps. Start getting to that point. I'm gonna hit the calibration page, read, make sure that everything works. I'm gonna check for traffic. I'm good with traffic. I'm gonna turn a little bit away from traffic back towards the airfield. Gentle turns as your full flaps configure. We're bleeding down to 47 knots, stabilized, and we'll hit calibrate. Trimming. East practice area, Skyhawk 28 Romeo, maneuvering over Juniper at 6,100 feet. East practice area. Okay, so ready to 7,800 feet. That's okay. It's indicated, it's indicated. Let's try that one more time. I think I was client. I was kind of pulling back on the stick a little bit with my knees <laughs> be able to film this. So let's just do that again. Let's stabilize at 47. East back to the area. Sky of Kuwait Romeo is over Juno for maneuvering 6,700. East back to the area. Sky of Kuwait Romeo is over Juno for maneuvering 6,700. This right. is going to be where the tones are steady. You're only 10% above your stall speed. Okay. About there. Cool. Alrighty. So now we'll do the stall warning. That's the caution stall warning. So here's where we go into an ag an actual stall. So let's speed up a little bit. And you don't have to do anything or hold anything precisely. You just do a power off stall. And it's going to know. Let's play coordinated, why don't we? Um, it's going to know what the max AOA you had when the stall broke, okay? Get a few knots above stall speed, so we can do a nice approach to stall and stall maneuver. We're going to trim it for about this airspeed right here. It's good, safe airspeed above stall speed. Get into the calibration mode, centering the ball, leveling off. Centering the ball. Keeping it level, and then I'll pull the throttle. Hit start. And now here we go. It's monitoring, so I'm going to pull the throttle. I won't spike the airway too much. Let's keep it level. Keep it level. Stick's coming back. Stick's coming back until you get a nice break. Pulse the stick a little bit. There's the break. Good. That was a nice clean stall. And then it says you want to come back to level flight first before, and you don't want to pulse it and get a secondary stall. So there we go. Nice level flight. And we hit done. And it says successful. Okay. So yep, that's just slightly more than that. That works. So now it unlocks this one. So, ooh, we're getting some beeps that are super loud. So the calibration for the approach speed. So target airspeed and the approach speed. I need to look that up. Stand by. Alright, so 1.3 times my Stall speed, so 1.3 times 43, I got uh, 56. So we're going to stabilize at 56. Level. Pretty good right there. That is ear piercingly loud for me. Stabilize at 56. We'll trim down. Try to Nats S56. This is miles an hour. It'd be even harder because they're closer together. This would be easier with two hands. All right, here we go. Let's bleed off those knots. Six. There we go. Start. Calibrate. Fairly stable at 56. So good. All right, so there's my numbers. Let's see if I can take a screenshot. And we'll check it out. So we'll try to fly 56 knots level or in a descent. See what the... Anyway, so you can accelerate it, right? You could pull back and go right to stall at a higher airspeed. It's not airspeed dependent, right? Oh, I gotta turn that down. That is redonkulously loud. Why don't I speed up to turn off the beeps? Reduce the angle of attack. So that will go away at the angle of attack that we already established. That's your minimum visual.
speed. So if I keep speeding up or push, clean off the wing, less AOA, it'll go away. Boom. Okay, we're gonna clean up. There you have it. That's how you calibrate your AOA. Making good time with your hand fitting into mine. Every mile you Welcome back to the debrief. Super quick, Jughead, don't fall asleep. After I landed, I immediately fired up the configuration mode for the G3X Touch and found where to turn down those god-awful beeps. Turns out they were only set to 50%. I turned them all the way down to 10% because 20% was still too loud and 10% they totally went away. So uh, they're at 20% and they're still gonna be loud, but I'd rather have them be too loud than, than too quiet. Angle of attack is useful because it shows you a wing's performance totally agnostic of airspeed or environmental conditions, temperature, pressure, etc. So I'd highly recommend getting an angle of attack system in your aircraft if you if you can and if if you plan on maximizing performance and getting right up to that to that limit, right? You know where is it gonna come in handy? Clearly on doing some short approaches into backcountry fields at high density altitudes. Here's the, the calibration data, not that it really means anything to you. It's it's what it is, is a coefficient of pressure that between the dynamic port on the pitot tube and then those smaller ports underneath, it's just comparing those two. And so, you know, all you're doing is just verifying that that these numbers are kind of in their respective order, not going from largest to smallest. The smallest number should actually be this one. And then the largest number should be this one, then this one, then this one, and then that's number four. So you're just kind of making sure that those are kind of in, in that order that kind of makes sense. And what you're doing by doing this calibration is you are telling it where that curve is on this coefficient of, of pressure. And the, the system is capable of having two curves. If your aircraft is smart enough to know your flap position, you can have a flaps up angle of attack meter, and then when you go flaps down, then it'll switch over to the flaps down or the VSO, you know, the, the dirty configuration curve. That's great. Mine's very simple. My aircraft doesn't know flaps up or flap, flaps down, so just one curve, but warning, warning, and this is gonna necessitate some testing out of my part is doing some clean stall testing and see what that angle of attack gives me. If, you know, I forget to dump the flaps or I'm doing half flaps, what does the angle of attack, is it close? Is it worth using or do I have to consciously ignore it? So good information to know, obviously more to follow. So I've noticed that compared to other angle of attack indications that I've used in other aircraft, this one tends to be a little bit laggy and it's probably because it's not just a straight vein. It's you know, doing some analysis and measuring pressures. And so it's a little bit laggy. Um, it's not bad, but it's not great in a super dynamic environment, d dynamic situation, pulsing the stick, which brings me to the topic of dynamic overshoot. You know, if you're pulsing the stick back or if you're, you know, accelerating a stall, you're gonna have some pitch momentum. I apologize, I don't have my sticks there in the hangar, so apologies as I shoot my watch here. As you generate some, some pitch momentum, um, that can carry you through that critical angle of attack and actually be beyond that critical angle of, of attack. Now, fighter pilots operate in that regime a lot and you, there's times when you can kind of use that, especially when you're trying to decelerate, use, use uh, induced drag. Raptor guys make their living in the post-stall regime aided by thrust vectoring and advanced flight control systems. Just, just know that it's a little bit laggy. Oh, the fact that I have to show you this now in a not pretty screenshot, like the, the GTX Touch, can take a screenshot and I just didn't know the hotas, the hands-on throttle to stick the button, button pushes. I looked it up, push and hold the men menu button until it flashes, then it saves it to the SD card. So lesson learned on that one. The telemetry data on screen from the bogey is an awesome, awesome new tool I've discovered. And yes, that actually is the data straight from the Garmin G3X system. I'm just now dipping my toe in and I'm super excited. I can create essentially any gauge I want out of all this data. So here's the raw data from said flight. And as I scroll over, I want your help. Take a look at the top couple rows here. See if there's a gauge that you want displayed on the screen, whether it's in flight tests or backcountry missions or uh, whatever else. So this is all what I'm recording. Outside air temperature, density altitude, that might be an interesting one. So again, let me know in the comments if there's a gauge you wanna see in the future. Okay, so I just hit 10 hours on the engine for the bogey and the CHUTs are coming down to the point where I'm finally comfortable doing some low power 
tests like this. I don't consider break-in done by any means yet, so I'm definitely limiting my low power ops. So I've spent hours just bombing around the Deschutes River and Mount Bachelor and the Cascade Mountains, Prineville Reservoir, and I have uploaded those to some playlists, some long form 360 cam stuff, and then also reframed for two-dimensional regular viewing. I look for those and feel free to stream those long form. And of course, look for brand new episodes of the task-based flight test of the backcountry bogey, including the cowl trip lip. I took it off to see what kind of performance I was getting with it on. And then pedo static system validation, autopilot rigging, and much, much more. But for now, I gotta pack and hit the hay because I got an early trip. Seattle, Phoenix, Boise, Tucson. Spring is in the air. It's coming. I cannot wait to get heavy and deep into the flight test now that the engine is getting broken in as well as uh, get this done with flight test because that's backcountry season coming very, very soon. Jughead, wake up. Debrief is over. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Till next time, it's Steve. Fight's on. You're cleared direct. <laughs>